What's going on YouTube? This is NecroSteve and I'm very happy to finally back in the saddle. I'm very happy to finally back in the saddle. You know what? I'm so happy to finally be back recording that I'm not even going to edit that out. That's how happy we are to be here today. I have a little bit something of uh, a little bit different for you all today and this is an Ubers match. But it's not strictly an Ubers match. Uh, trainer Connor and I, one of my longtime rivals, had this battle. It was supposed to be a Generations battle, but I'm a little bit derpy and I chose two Pokemon from Generation 6. That's okay, it was still a really interesting, really close battle. Um, so from Generation 1, Raticate, Generation 2, Steelix, Generation 3, Absol, Generation 4, the Lucario. I don't have a Generation 5 Pokemon. Um, and I actually meant to go Hoopa Unbound is what I meant to go there, but I was I just didn't use the uh, the bottle on it, the prisoner's bottle before the battle. So we have a Life Orb Hoopa, which actually worked out okay for this match. And then the last slot there, that nice shiny Xerneas from the event. Now, uh, Connor actually brought some pretty interesting Pokemon to his side of the team. Just immediately there, Darkrai is incredibly threatening as I really only have priority from Lucario and Absol to hit it. If I can get off a of Geomancy after Ditto goes down, then I can sweep his whole team. But that whole part where Ditto stays alive until, you know, until it comes in is a little bit of a difficulty to handle. So I didn't want to make sure that I didn't go for the Geomancy until I took care of the Ditto. Uh, Steelix is really just here to get up, get up entry hazards. It's not Mega Steelix, I have Mega Absol instead. I was hoping to bounce some back to his side. Uh, and Absol actually does work pretty nicely against the likes of Amoongus, who can't really touch it, especially when I'm bouncing things back. Um, and I can also bounce back the Dark Void from the uh, Darkrai, but Darkrai gets so many different coverage options, that might not be the best deal. I was pretty proud of the Eradicate set. This is actually Eradicate that I got from... Um, I'm pretty sure this one came from one of the giveaways that Lucario on Twitter did, and this one works out really, really well. Now here at Steelix, his goal was to get up rocks. I do get burned, which sucks, but that's scald for you. I wanted to put up rocks because he has no way to get rid of them, and they greatly pressure his Talon Flame. Help me wear down the ditto. Then we can set some things up and start sweeping. Uh, since I am burned, there's not... <laughs> I mean, I can just roar here, hopefully, to send him out into something that he doesn't want to be in. No, the hair cross? Okay, cool because that doesn't immediately just one hit KO me with close combat. Um, I could take the opportunity to go into Hoopa, expecting the close combat, but that's really risky if he goes for Megahorn. Not really worth the risk. We're just gonna stay in here expecting the close combat and go for a heavy slam. Since I'm burned, doesn't do anything. Since he switches into Swampert, it really doesn't do anything. Swampert's actually pretty heavy. We forget these things. I don't really want to switch out here, and I know another Skull is going to KO me. If I had something to switch into the uh, the Skull, that would be really, really nice here. But I really don't want anything else getting burned. Um, so Steelix does go down, but he did his job. So now we have the opportunity to bring in something to threaten out the, uh, the Swampert. I go into Hoopa, because Hoopa gets so many different coverage options here, I knew it would make him want to switch out. But I couldn't really anticipate what he would want to go into. I was very wary of going for Psychic because he might go into Darkrai, but then I figured, eh, what the heck, let's just try going straight for Psychic because I didn't want Steelix's sacrifice to be in vain. And that works out whereas he goes into Heracross expecting the Grass type move. Now he does get to go out into Ditto, which sucks because my whole moveset gets revealed at this point. I think a lot of the draw of Hoopa is its unpredictability and it can run a lot of different types of uh, offensive moves. And actually you can kind of tell there. I'm running Psychic and Hyperspace Hole. Hyperspace Hole is a Psychic type move until you turn it into Hoopa Unbound. It's a little bit of redundant coverage there, but I guess it's nice in case um, you want to get some nice Spadef drops. But uh, I do manage to live the Drain Punch. That was a great prediction by Connor going for Drain Punch as I brought in my Absol. I just decided to go straight for a uh, knockoff followed by a Sucker Punch, and that's not quite enough to, fill, to um, finish off the um, Amoongus there. I stayed in the regular form, hoping, hoping, hoping that I would get the critical hit, but I didn't quite get it. So, eh, that's a super luck Absol for you there. Um, I'm gonna go out here, go for Facade, hope that it's enough to KO the Amoongus and then I can get my Flame Orb. 
This is actually the ratty that Yellow had in the Pokemon Adventure series. So if you guys have read that at all, Yellow had some pretty cool Pokemon, and this was one of them. I know I can't one-hit KO the Swampert from this range, and I do want to hold on to that HP. Raticate doesn't have a lot of HP to play around with. I figured that Hoopa can take a Scald pretty well. If you went for Earthquake, that would hurt. But Scald, Hoopa has great base special defense. Um, he does burn me again, which really racks up the residual damage between switching into Rocks, Burn, and then my Life Orb. I completely overpredict here, thinking he's going to go into Darkrai for sure. But he goes right, he just stays in. Uh, very, very ballsy. I think a Psychic or a Hyperspace Hole would have done a very large amount of damage to Swampert. But I basically lost Hooper on an open prediction for no real good reason. Um, we need to pay him back for some of these burns that he's getting with Scald. So we're going to go out into my Raticate and go for Facade. I knew it wouldn't KO or it had a very low chance of KOing if he's defensive. But I actually get a critical hit. So, huzzah. Now, it didn't matter that much because he wouldn't have KO'd me with a Scald. He might have been able to KO me after Burn with an Earthquake. Uh, here, I'm just going to leave Raticate in because there is nothing that I have that I want to bring in on a Brave Bird or a Flare Blitz. Uh, and if he gets some recoil damage after the rocks, I can finish it off with an Extreme Speed from a Life Orb Adamant Lucario. Very nice priority right there. Uh, that's just something that Talonflame can't really mess with. Now, this is also nice to have in the back because should he copy my Xerneas' uh, Geomancy, I can, if I get some chip damage on Ditto, then I can bring in Lucario and then go for that nice extreme speed with Life Orb. Right here, I figured that he was going to lock into the fighting type move, so this is a golden opportunity. Or I guess uh, uh, that's, there's a lot of different colors being represented right there. This is a prism of opportunities to bring in Xerneas and um, just go for an attack. Again, don't want to set up until Ditto is gone, and he's probably going to switch it out here. So I get a free Moonblast onto something, and he decides for that to be Darkrai, probably expecting me to go for a Geomancy, I would imagine. But uh, yeah, we just get to take Darkrai out and not let Dark Ward be a factor at all, which is exactly what I wanted to happen in this battle. Ditto comes back out, now this is his uh, final Pokemon, and I'm actually gonna go for a Geomancy now, because of the way Geomancy mechanics work, you start charging at like an increase priority, kind of like when you use Focus Punch and you start focusing at the beginning of the turn. Then the Power Orb activates and then you get the boost. If I had to um, start charging and then I got hit by Moonblast, then I got the boost, then we might be in some trouble. But this way I have plus two special defense and his Moonblast doesn't do very much damage at all. And of course, since we have two Xerneas on the field, I also get the boost from his Fairy Aura and so I'm gonna be able to take out Ditto with this much lower and inferior HP stat too. So that was a really close battle. Came down to Xerneas on Xerneas action. There just a lot of, uh, oh, I probably could have worded that better actually. Um, a Xerneas Ditto, well, never mind. that doesn't help either because it literally was a Ditto. Came down to a matchup between two powerful legendaries. There we go. I like that wording a lot. We're gonna go with that one. Use the third take. I'll edit those other ones out in post, I'm sure. You guys have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.